All right, so this is um, a L'Hopital's problem from paper three. And if we got this on our paper three, we would rejoice because it would be so awesome. You first put in a zero like I did. So you get one minus cosine zero over zero to the 12th is zero. So one minus one is zero over zero indeterminate form. That entitles me to write limit as n approaches zero of the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of one? Zero. What's the derivative of cosine x to the sixth? Not cosine to the sixth. Cosine x to the sixth. Well, that's just going to be negative. Cosine derivative is negative sine x to the sixth. But what's the derivative of x to the sixth? Chain rule. Six x to the fifth over the derivative of x to the 12th, which is 12, x to the 11th. That looks absolutely horrible, doesn't it? It looks so terrible. So let's make it nicer. Sine x to the 6th, 6 over 12 is 1 half, so I'm going to put a 1 half out in front. And then what is x to the 11th? divided by x to the fifth, x to the sixth. So somewhere we had this, as u goes to zero, sine u over u, what is that? That's one. So it's one half times one, which is a half. Nice little quick problem. Then going back to the other one you asked about, number three, sketch the graph. You are not required to find coordinates of the maximum. So we're, if we're going between zero and two, uh, we have x plus one and uh, two minus x. So x plus one happens at negative one. Oh, yeah negative 1 and 0 and 2 are all zeros, right? And you see this little 2 minus x? That's the same as the opposite of x minus 2, right? What does this little opposite do to the, pr the cubic? It flips it. So what will happen here, I guess negative 1 would be back here further, it would be that instead of a normal cubic that would be this but because of that minus it's going to flip it okay and then they want uh, let's see only between 0 and 2 so we can take this off and take that off and so there's your graph Everywhere else, it's zero. That's what that means. Find the value of k. So we're going to integrate. We don't care about anything else. What should the area of this be if it's a probability density function? One. So my answer should be one. But I'm going from zero to two. And you have a little k constant I'm pulling out in front. x squared plus x times 2 minus x. Do you see what I did there? I just multiplied these two together. So I, now I can multiply these two together. So I get 1 is equal to k. 0 to 2. Uh, let's see. Negative x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x um, minus x squared dx. Well, that minus x squared just knocks this one down a peg, doesn't it? So it's just going to be 1x squared. Nope. 2x two, two squared minus x squared will be plus x squared. Right? Okay, so now integrate that. 
you integrate this, you get negative x to the 4 over 4 plus x to the 3 over 3 plus 2x to the second over 2 going from 0 to 2. So now we just do the work. 1 is equal to k. Put a 2 in first. And you'll get negative 16 over 4 plus 8 over 3 plus 4. What happens when I put the zeros in? Who cares? They're just zero, right? Now this is negative 16 fourths, and this is 4. This, these 4s are going to cancel, aren't they? Okay, so this is 1 is equal to k times 8 thirds. So what's k? 3 eighths. Now, stop for a second. Well, yeah, it's just a constant, so it doesn't have to be between anything in particular. Is that it? Is that all we had to do? And look at that. K is 3 eighths. I had to write that in because I got it cut off. 